Thanks for joining me today. This is Noah with MSX Group. We are going to be looking at budgeting and forecasting for Acumatica. And the uh, topics on the right hand side here, budgeting forecaster for user input. We're focusing mainly on the end user's uh, use of the application. Uh, inside the application we also have uh, input screens for payroll budgeting budgeting uh, all the existing employees and new hires for next year, their wages, taxes, and benefits, uh, built-in templates for capital budgeting, any new assets you want to add for next year's uh, operations, which will book the cost of the cost account and project depreciation expense for those assets, and reporting and analysis of that budget data. So we are going to open up, starting off with the quick launch window for you. Uh, I'll go through the demo with you, then I have a short one slide after this to uh, wrap up this video. All right, let's jump into it. I'm currently looking at our quick launch window, and I will use the tile right here in the middle for our budget input 2024 to get started. I'll just click this tile once. And this brings up the prompt window, letting this budget user select which company they want to budget for, which location, and which department. And they will only have access to the combination of these that they have been granted access. This will open up our, this will open up our main input screen for the budget. And there are three tabs across the top the main tab which we're currently looking at human resources and capital I'll look at these two later and those two are optional uh, it may be that this budget user only needs the main tab and if that's the case they would not even see the tabs for human resources and capital for this input screen it is a spreadsheet style user input screen rows and columns very much like Excel or any other spreadsheet I just want to point out that it is not Excel based. It's all designed inside this application and we're using the web version of this application. We've got account numbers on the left hand side which we've been uh, copied in from our chart of accounts from the general ledger. Our columns run January through December. If I scroll to the right, I'll have year to date balances as well as our uh, comparison to prior actuals, dollar variances, and percent variances for comparison. When the budget administrators build these input screens, they control what accounts are displayed here, what columns are displayed here, the shading, the background colors, the font sizes, all the calculations. They design the templates. It's very customizable for your individual organization. And they can build one template that is used by all locations, all departments, uh, or they could have multiple templates used by different combinations. For the main input screen, account level input is very simple. Users can come in here and just type in balances, copy and paste using shortcut keys on the keyboard like control C and control V. They can take balances and copy those across columns using shortcut keys like Control R. Easy data input at the account level inputs here. Um, they can do that for any row that's available for input. I do have several rows here in gray that are not available for input. Those are being calculated by the other tabs like Human Resources and Capital. In, additional, uh, in addition to typing in balances to accounts, a lot of budget users will want to add notes to their uh, budget input screens, which is fine. We can handle that here. I, I see uh, one note already for production supplies. I know that because on the left-hand margin, I've got a blue square. If I hover over that blue square, the last text that was added to that row pops up, shows me the entry. And as long as I click once anywhere on that row, on the right-hand side for annotations, I can see that text. And any notes that have been added for that row. The user ID that added that note, which was the admin user, and the date and time it was added. Now this user can see those notes, they can add their own notes, and anybody else with access to this input screen can see those notes and add theirs as well. 
So a great way for a collaboration right here inside the application. Another great feature for breaking down the details for budget input here on the main tab will be line item details. And I've already got a few accounts that already have line item details added. I know that because a few rows have the plus icon on the left hand margin, like for tuition reimbursement. If I click that plus icon once, it opens up and shows me that I have three green rows, three rows of line item details that add up to the total for the account right above that row, that section. Uh, your budget managers, they can uh, type in, the, they can add as many rows of line item details that they need to without having to ask anybody to do it for them. They can just type in over to, uh, type over the description with whatever this should represent, type in the balances. These all roll up to the account row right above this section. It does not cause any problems with consolidations because everything is posted to the account numbers that were copied in from the chart of accounts. So a lot of details, a great way to add additional information to break down those balances and see where the totals are really coming from. Any changes here, we track those in history. Uh, you'll be able to see whatever uh, balances were changed, what user changed those balances, and the date and time those balances were changed. And a huge feature is that as soon as your budget managers are finished with their data input for this screen, they can go to the top left, click the save icon to save these balances in the SQL database that everybody at your organization would share. It's instantly consolidated and it's also available for reporting right away against uh, any data set inside the application. So last year's actuals, the last budget, the last forecast, any data set is available in reporting against these numbers. One of the optional tabs here is for human resources. So let's look at that next with you. This tab here, same department, location, and company we started off with. Every row here is a different employee that we would have imported from your payroll system. Uh, and all the information here is used to track the wages, taxes, and benefits for all of these employees and any new hire changes for next year as well. We're tracking hourly employees as well as salaried employees. If I scroll back to the left with you, you'll see that we're going to break down the hours and the FTEs for all these employees by individual months. See January through December here, the hours for the hourly employees, the FTEs for the salaried employees. We're tracking their hourly pay rate for the hourly people, annual pay rates for the uh, salaried employees. Scrolling a little bit to the right, we can handle tracking pay changes for all of these employees. We can, I've got this set up for two pay changes. You can have more if you need those. We just track the percentage change and what month those changes take effect. Same thing for the second increase in these two columns. A little bit more to the right, we can handle bonus calculations for all these employees as a percentage of their earnings or as a fixed dollar amount. And we had that uh, option inside here to spread that money evenly across the periods or pay that money out in specific periods. Further to the right, we've got options to track overtime for all of these employees, any commissions related to these employees, and we have benefit columns as well to help break down what tax rates all these different employees should be using and benefit amounts. I've got a column for state codes for different state taxes, state tax calculations. I've got a health column for what class of insurance applies to each individual employee. I've got a column for workers comp. We can have up to 10 columns for benefit and uh, tax breakouts here. <clears throat> and you, def uh, you decide what these represent and all the rates that go with these. Now all the information here on the Human Resources tab is used to calculate the wages, taxes, and benefits for all these employees. And all the dollars that are calculated, we do have those displayed back on the main tab. So if I go back to the top here and click main, you'll be able to see the sections for our salaries. All these are in gray because they come from the calculations from the Human Resource tab. Uh, we're tracking headcount, 
hours per month, FTEs per month, um, we've got health insurance and some other uh, taxes that relate to all those calculations. And again, human resources is optional and if you uh, do implement human resources and some employees should not have access, they will not even see the tab for human resources. Very similar concept for the capital tab where we can budget for new assets. On this page, uh, every row is a uh, new asset for next year's budget or a group of assets. We can add as many rows here as we need to. We just track when we intend to purchase these items, when to start depreciation expense, how many we plan to purchase, and the cost uh, for each individual asset we're adding. All the uh, details here are used to book the cost to the cost accounts and project depreciation expense for these new assets as well. And back on the main tab, we do have the dollars and different sections for our cost for all those assets and depreciation expense. Just like HR, the Human Resources tab is an optional tab. Capital is an optional tab. Uh, if you do end up setting up capital, it's an easy setup process, easy to use. And if you have some budget managers that should not see capital, they will not even see the tab here at the top. Now the same thing when we save the main entries here. If you make any changes on human resources or capital and just click the save button, all the budget dollars are calculated right away. They're stored in the SQL database that everybody uses at your organization. Those numbers are available for reporting right away. They're consolidated right away and available for comparison to any other data set. Actuals, prior year actuals, prior budgets, prior forecasts, anything's available right away. And speaking about uh, reporting, let's look at our budgeted uh, income statement. I've already read, got that open for us, January through December, your date balances. We have uh, options to build any reports you need inside the application here. We have drill down to the details, so if I double click anywhere on the sales row, this will uh, drill down and show me all of the individual accounts that all these balances are posted to. You can also change the drill down order, so instead of drilling down directly to the account level detail, I can summarize that by any of my dimensions. So I'll just go to the top here and click change drill down order. Uh, let's say I want to summarize it by location, I'll just click and drag this to the top. And now if I double click on sales, this will be summarized by our different locations, Miami, San Francisco, Denver. So easy to analyze that data in a numeric format. And you can also look at all this in charts and graphs as well. I've got this report set up as a pie chart just for the year-to-date totals comparing net revenue against total expenses. So if I go to the top and click display as chart, this opens up in a new tab for us. Uh, the blue, if I hover over that piece of the pie here, it pops up and shows me that this is for net revenue, about 1.5 million and it's about 83% of the total pie here. The red would be for total expenses, about 317,000, about 16% of the total pie here. And the same way we had drill down for the numeric reports, we have drill down options available for the charts and graphs as well. So it's not just a static picture of this data. I can double click on total expenses and this will drill down for me and break out all the totals. I can see right away that Denver Services uh, has most of the expenses, about 6% goes to a demo company, Miami Services about 8%, about um, Seattle's got 7% here, so easy to see that breakdown uh, by any of your companies or dimensions in numeric format or in charts and graphs inside the application. Very flexible application. Uh, we looked at this, primarily looking at this for the budgeting uh, cycle, but uh, the same would apply for forecasting. Your actuals are copied in automatically from the GL and it's available to be included on your input screens right away. Very flexible application, a great way uh, to get your budgets inside here and compare them right away to prior actuals or any other data set. 
and in wrapping up this video with you I want to thank you for watching at what's next on your side email me for a private demo uh, at noah.mosley at msxgroup.com that's on the screen there on the right uh, we also offer you know free 30-day trial sites if you want to get a feel for budgeting and forecasting for Acumatica we'll set you up for that and a no obligation quote as well thank you I hope you have a great day talk to you soon